Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta with my special guest for Monday Mystery. I'm having so much fun having Natalie from Questioning the Narrative here to present some of these Alaskan, I was about to say Australian. It's been a, a long day of filming all over the world. These uh, Alaskan mysteries. And of course, with Stephanie here, who's going to be the Nancy Drew into the divine. Um, at some point, I'm going to have to hop off for like five minutes because I got something coming to my house. So when you see me disappear, I promise you I did not rapture. I'm just picking something <laughs> up at the front door. <laughs> so you'll, you'll probably hear the prelude of my dog barking before it comes. So anyway, I just I had an image of you rapturing and all of a sudden your body disappears, but your dress floats in the sky. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, like in one of those apocalyptic movies. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Wouldn't that piss the Christians off if I raptured and they didn't? <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, if you're rapturing, we better come with you. <laughs> yeah, I better. <laughs> Beat me up, Scotty. Hey, I've been asking to abort mission for a while. So um, anyway, no, I don't want to abort mission because I think the fun <laughs> is about to begin. I yeah. think some, some reuniting is about to happen and that's going to be a lot of fun. Yes, I hope so. It's all coming. Solar flash. Multidimensional celebration. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so that's the story for another day, though. So <laughs> to recap, we have been speaking about a few things in Alaska. Last week, we spoke about the Sleeping Lady of Alaska, um, which we got through the cards were was a giant. And that was the story, right? That she was a giant. And, um, and yes, I stand by my opinion that not all the giants were bad. Um, mm -hmm. And I just want to make that clear. And that's a pretty, um, in my opinion, that's a pretty sad perspective to have on any species. You know, if we think about um, human beings, for example, our own species, 1% of us have been doing bad things like eating particular meats. Yeah. So well, why? You know too? I mean, there's a, a little um, percentage of reptilians that are good. Yeah. And there's a lot of Anunnaki that are good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every living being on this earth, the, the main universal law is free will. Every living being on this earth has free will. With that being said, because we have free will, we are not responsible for the actions of others. And how awful would that be if we were? What if we all had yeah. to be executed because 1% of humans Ugh. participated in these activities? That wouldn't be fair. That would be coming from a fair, just God, would it? Mm -mm. So we need to understand that about giants too, leprechauns, all the beings that I never thought I'd be. Am I considered a leprechaun at 411? <laughs> <laughs> is there a height standard and then all of a sudden you're recharacterized as a leprechaun? I mean, you know, maybe so. I don't know. I don't know. Um, no, you're not. Um, you know I'm teasing. Is I'm, in... I love to make fun of my height because one day I have this aspiration. Then I'm going to walk into a med bed, grow a few inches and walk out. <laughs> Could you it's imagine if all of a sudden day. we became giants overnight? I think I said this last week. Like it would, it would take a moment to get your your. It'd be like a deer. Oh, we'd be cute all stumbling. <laughs> <Like, yeah. laughs> well, apparently, apparently the uh, Sasquatch Bigfoot think we're cute. Oh. Apparently, they oh, think we're adorable. I look like a teacup poodle to them. Well, apparently, I elephants think anything think we're tiny cute is adorable. Too. So. Elephants think we're adorable too. <laughs> Apparently the same uh, chemicals that release in our brain when we see puppies are the chemicals that are released in an elephant's brain when they see us. They think we're puppies. <laughs> That's really cute. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently the Bigfoot, most Bigfoots are good. They're just, you know, get caught between the time warp of... Um... Okay, I need to get me a Millennium Falcon and a Bigfoot. So it's like Chewbacca with a Millennium Falcon. I just want my dragon. Yeah. I want a dragon too. Dragon. I finished the Sophia code. It hasn't all aired yet, but I did finish it up. It's pre-recorded um, because of some things coming up in my schedule. So, and I, and apparently at the end, now I have my Sophia dragon, but where is she? Oh, nice. Where is she? <laughs> I want to ride her. <laughs> actually for real if a giant poked his head off right now i'd probably grab my pants so. <laughs> yeah i know same we're all talk but really if it's all one. talk we're all talk we'd be the first one right out the door if it, if it, if it, if it, i don't know i think i'd be excited I'm like, it'll be an adjustment did you, guys, did you guys watch that movie growing up i think do you guys watch the movie growing up pete's dragon mm -hmm. all right i think Carry so on conversation for just one moment i'll be right back okay, okay. well while she gets her smoothie what was I going to say? I don't know. 
<laughs> um, dragons? Something about Peach Dragon. Is that that dragon that, like, is that the 80s movie? I'm I trying so. to remember. Mm-hmm. Okay. I yeah, don't remember was... the plot, but I know I've seen it. But it's been a while. Well, I remember I doused and, and asked about dragons. Apparently, I got four. Oh. Remember I told you I have four? Yeah, I do remember, yeah. actually. And they had really cute names. Then again, it's dousing, and dousing is not 100% accurate. So I could be completely mm-hmm. wrong on that. It really depends. Because, you know, that can get a little distorted if you're not sailing properly. So one day, I guess I, I'll find out. Let's see the smoothie. Nice. Green. Kill me crazy, baby. It's one of those days. This is my fourth video today. So I have literally gone from video to video to video to video to video. So kill me crazy it is. So, all right. I pissed a lot of Christians off today. Do that every day. On what show? Dark Outpost. Oh, yeah. That we talked every about time the Bible there. and all the contradictions in the Bible. I could, I could feel their energy coming through the comments. I'm like, because I can feel energy mm-hmm. even if I can't see it. And I'm like, I was getting bombarded with it. I'm like, what's well, a good thing I have my tourmaline pyramid with me? Because boy, they're not happy at all. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, the, you know, it's so interesting. I've said this before. We know how the liberals react to a lot of things where it becomes aggressive. Same thing with the Christians. It's the same. same. Yeah. They react the same way. And that just shows you how deep the programming is, how deep yeah. the control is. I feel, I feel sorry. I mean, I know I was programmed at one point so that I would hope that would help people see that, you know, if I can get out of it, anybody can. But I don't, I wasn't fundamentalist. I was just 75% programmed, I would say. It's cult. Mm-hmm. It's any, any cult will program the same. <coughs> and, um, the church programs the exact same way as heaven's gate yeah. programmed as, you know, the Koreshians as, you know, yeah. all the different cults. They, it's, it's where you have this, these rules. And if you don't abide by them and you don't bow down to the organization, you're out. And so they're fighting for their own mm-hmm. survival too, to stay within the cult. But you know, it's, you can't, you can leave the horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And that's yeah. what's sad to me is that all this information we bring forward in our research is actually really good news. And it actually confirms that the real God is yeah. amazing. It's and fun really to learn news. about it. Have fun, people. Have fun. It's just, it's Broaden sad your how horizons. They, yeah. It's sad how they mess with people's emotions and stuff to that extent, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It was sad. But hopefully... Sorry, I'm freezing on my end. So if I stop talking at a random awkward time, <laughs> that is why. You're <laughs> laughing. Oh, laugh. I love that. So <laughs> in our last episode, I saw it before we started filming. It was the funniest comment. She, she or he uh, quoted, uh, it's, it's not that bad, says the Alaskan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Meanwhile, I would die. I tell you, die. I didn't even have gloves until this year. So Yeah, and- when your fingies are like on fire with cold yeah it sucks so you guys probably you guys probably don't get boob sweat do you maybe uh, i mean we okay. have like three hot days in the year and then maybe then <laughs> so three days of boob sweat do you know what swass is mm-hmm. so yeah swass up there swass yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, not often. <laughs> I'm sure we call it this something different up here. All right, I have to say something. When I, when you were with the, in the car with me at one point driving in Georgia, I sometimes I'll put my leg up. For this yes, thing. I know this. It's so I can air myself out, guys. That's how hot it is down here. But but girls don't sweat. Makes what do they do? They glisten. They glisten. Even our vaginas yeah. glisten. <laughs> sweaty, sweaty. So you want me to pull cards on that, Bryce? No, I don't. I don't. I don't think it's going to be. <laughs> I had, for I had one tarot reading on my vagina a while ago, and I don't want to go do that again. So. <laughs> oh, that was a very interesting reading. I think Natalie froze. Oh, she did freeze. She did <laughs> well, freeze. She looks good in the frozen position. <laughs> at least it's a good one. Natalie, if you could hear us type something into the box, <laughs> the conversation box. When you said the box. After you were talking with us, <laughs> even with you. <laughs> Last time somebody read on my box, 
my natal chart got stolen. So <laughs> apparently there was a lot of interesting information in that filing cabinet down there in the nether regions because the <laughs> my natal chart refuses. So <laughs> apparently I have a golden box. I don't know. Oh, Natalie likes <laughs> It's gold plated with platinum on the outside. Apparently, that's why it got stolen. You froze, and I said something about I'm back. You were talking. I was talking about my hoo ha. And the last time I got a tear <laughs> reading on my hoo ha, everything went to hell in a handbasket. That's when my natal chart got stolen. So obviously, my box is pretty special. That's hilarious. I don't even know. <laughs> oh my gosh! I was advised though to get a yoni egg, and I got one. <laughs> Steph is dying. I got one. <laughs> ah. Am I the only one here now? <laughs> okay, I changed to my hotspot, so hopefully I won't exit again randomly. It's my box. <laughs> I just radiate. Stop radiating. You're messing my internet up. <laughs> Steph. <laughs> You're <laughs> glistening away. I guess this needed a little red. <laughs> I uh, guess this video needed a better vibration. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's all coming from a box. You should label it. Alaskan mysteries: the golden box, golden box. <laughs> oh my gosh! I don't want Alaska to be known as that. <laughs> All the orbs are coming out of. Little do I know, all the orbs are birthed out of Earth now. <laughs> anyway, all right. Ooh, a serious okay. thing. <laughs> well, it's probably a good thing because this topic is a little darker. Oh, good. So we started off on a high note. All right. Yeah. So I actually asked you last week, Natalie, to look into because. As we're backtracking, it's the land of the giants. Apparently, it used to be tropical. We know we've got some interesting things going on in Alaska. The first show we did, we had to put on Rumble because too much was coming out about. My mind went somewhere really bad with that whole entire sentence. Which one? Do tell. I like bad giants stuff. with tropical and. Never mind. Never mind. Their nether regions probably get a bit tropical. <laughs> <laughs> they probably have legitimate palm trees, the males. Anyway. Oh, probably. Anyway. And then for women, it's a river runs through it, you know, so. <laughs> anyway. You're a bad influence. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. <laughs> <laughs> we're ridiculous. My milk we're Natalie. Just like like been, I know. We're, we're corrupting you, Natalie. <laughs> you and your beautiful, innocent little Alaska, Alaskan life. Anyway. <laughs> Um, my milkshake hasn't been shook for a while, though, so I don't know how many boys are flocking at the shard. <laughs> anyway, all right, I'm looking forward to that solar flash when it happens. That's what I can say. <laughs> right, so let's move on to darker topics. So, last week we learned that the sleeping lady of Alaska is a little bit legitimate giant who's taking a little nap outside of Anchorage. Um, I will put a link to that video down in the description box below if you missed it. This, of course, everything is all roads are leading us back to Tartaria. And um, I shared, I think I put some pictures in our last uh, video of if you join the Tartarian Research Group on Facebook, people show incredible photos of the giants walking amongst um, us little people. Because right around the Great Reset, when the giants were taken out, we kind of got the giants were taken out because of the mud floods, X, Y, and Z. That's why we see so many old buildings with high doors and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. right? It's not just for decoration. So I asked Natalie, Natalie, we, we know there's a lot of suspicious activity. And there's a lot of paranormal stuff going on, UFO stuff, all that. kind. I think anybody who's ever lived in Alaska has a story about seeing something. <laughs> so it's obviously a hot spot. And we also got that they kept it colder up there to almost refrigerate these bodies to keep them preserved, right? Because some of these giants are not dead. They're in stasis. So mm -hmm. their, their life force is being pulled, <clears throat> right? So I asked Natalie to do a dive into some of these um, smaller little towns, Mm -hmm. in villages i don't know what they would be <clears throat> called because we want to see kind of get an idea like what's happening because alaska seems like an incredibly awesome place when when we do even out and the, the flip does happen so the yeah. mystery is what is it about alaska that makes it so special that the 
controllers, the bad guys, have been using it. So let's go into this, Natalie. Tell us about these little towns in Alaska. Yeah, so did you give me permission to share screen? Okay, cool. Let me pull up some pictures. Okay, so basically there is a ton of villages in Alaska. There's over 200 that are um, federally observed. So I'm sure there's more. Um, so this is just a map kind of showing where they're at. They're all over the state. Wow. That's and um, they are kept very remote for some reason. Um, I have this other picture here. This shows the road system the train system and the boat system. So it barely goes anywhere on the state. So all these other villages are kind of stuck because they can't get to them by, um, by car. Um, do you guys see that picture? Yeah. How, yeah. How do they get mm -hmm. to them then through a snowmobile or. So, um, I mean, they're far away. I mean, just from point like J, I don't know if you can see that like j to like h that's 10 hours in a car <laughs> so like um snow machines and stuff we call them snow machines up here <laughs> um they can like they'll go from town to town in them but i mean they can't really get to civilization it's too far um and there's mountains and all that stuff between so on some of these bigger villages and by bigger i mean like a couple thousand people <laughs> Some airplanes go more often, but if you want to ticket out, I mean, it's anywhere from $300 to $1,000 to get out. And that just takes you to Anchorage. And then if you want out of the state, you need another ticket out of the state. So these people who are born and live in these villages, they're like stuck a lot of times. Are they, are they like indigenous people? Are they white people? Are they, what are they? Yeah. So they are mostly native Alaskans. Um, they have their babies there and they just kind of live there and they just mm -hmm. kind of stay. It, it, it kind of reminds me of these like tribal communities you see in like South America, an opposite type of climate, but they're kind of stuck in the Amazon mm -hmm. or whatever, you know? Yeah. Like some of these are literally like in an Island way over here. Like they ain't going nowhere anyway. So, um, they make it really hard to leave if you wanted to leave and, a lot of people don't even want to go there because a you're in the middle of nowhere. Some of these places don't have any running water or electricity, not all, but some, um, it's extremely expensive just to give you a glimpse into what some of these people pay for stuff. Milk can cost up to $20 a gallon. Um, a block of cheese can be $25 for a block in, in these gas. villages at their local little corner store. Yes. So, this is a general, obviously, some's more expensive, some's cheaper, but it's pretty expensive because everything has to be um, flown in there. And it's like small airplanes and it, it's expensive. Everything is flown in there. What um, jobs are they doing to make them kind of money to pay these exorbitant prices to live? So and it's another trap. Most of the time, there isn't really jobs. A lot of them are being paid because they are Alaska Native and they're being compensated through you know their tribe that you know we took all their land from them so a lot of them are being compensated however when there's not much to do bad things start happening you know if you don't have a job or a task you start there's alcoholism is rampant drugs is rampant um violent crimes and assaults and all that kind of stuff is through the roof in these villages um, I pulled up a crime in Alaska. This is just in general, the whole part of Alaska. However, um, a lot of these do happen in the villages because I'll get into it later, but there isn't much police force. So this is violent crimes. This blue thing is Alaska and this is the U.S. <laughs> so we are way above the national average on violent crimes and M-U-R-D-E-R's, we're way up there. And this just goes to 2019, and I'm sure it's gotten even worse the last couple of years. Our APE is like four times the national average. <sighs> A robbery. We used to be okay, but we surpassed it once the drug started really hitting hard. Um, yeah, here's... Um, you can see up here, I don't know, I want to say all these names to trigger anything, but... Uh, basically crime is through the roof in Alaska and a lot of it happens in these villages because um, most of these places don't have much of a police force. So if something happens, they kind of get away with it. Um, 
Oh, here's just another picture showing the roads. Okay, so police force there. A lot of villages don't have any because some of these villages are like 100 people or less. They're, they don't have any police force. Like some of them have- one family with extended members. That's basically it. So I'm sure it's families just so marrying let me ask families. You this, how, how do they mate? Like how, in all seriousness, like how are they I'm, bred? Like are, what's- I'm happening? sure there's some inbreeding happening. Um, but I mean, I, I don't want to just say that as a blanket statement. Um, I guess I don't know. <laughs> Um, anyways, so some of these people have like a local person that's like their cop, but a lot of times this local person already has a criminal record because it's a local and most locals kind of have criminal records because of all these crimes, but it goes under the radar because they need someone to fill that spot. So imagine what gets, what people get away with if the local law enforcement is already has, yeah, it's compromised. Um, and then, so Alaska state troopers are the ones that are supposed to be protecting these villages. However, we have about one Alaska state trooper per million acres in Alaska. And most of them are in like more suburban areas. They're not really <clears throat> stationed out here. So if something happens, they either have to, like this picture shows, helicopter in, fly in. If they're somehow connected to a road, drive in or snow machine in. Um, it's not a quick thing. So there was this one horrific story that I ran across where um, a young teenage girl got um, assaulted and M-U-R-D-E-R-E-D. -E -E and her family and citizens had to surround her body and wait for the cops to get there, which was, um, I, at, at the earliest, it was several hours later. It might have even been a couple days later. They were just guarding the crime scene to try to get justice for this girl because, um, yeah, things just go totally. It's like the Wild West. Yeah, it's really sad. Like, there's so many things that happen, yet, like, young girls and stuff will get RAPED and then um, their local law enforcement does nothing about it. Or they call 911 and they go to voicemail because they don't really have a 911. They just have to leave a message for the next day. And sometimes like they get ignored, you know? So it's just, it's sad. Um, okay, also another terrible fun fact is that women killed by men are four times the natural average up here. And Stephanie got on one of our videos once that there's just a bunch of women, uh, like, feminine being crushed up here so i want to read cards on that later um and then there's only about 20 percent of all of alaska are alaska natives and of that you know those girls and boys so let's just say the girls are about 10 percent of alaska and about 60 percent of the assault um cases are alaska native women and that's like 10% of the whole state. So basically, it's really focused on them and the villages. And it's terrible. And they don't seem to do much about this. So um, I'm going to say, if we have any Canadians watching right now, um, we know that the Indigenous people of Canada are targeted too. There's the whole highway in Canada. Not, forgive me, I'm not sure. I don't know what it's called, where a lot of Indigenous women have bodies have been found in Canada too. And if we take away the borders, so we, we look at the map without the border, mm -hmm. it's all one big land. For and sure. So um, maybe that can be a question we can ask. Is it the same motive that's happening in Alaska and Canada? We don't have to ask right now, but that there is a connection there. Yeah, I'll write that down. Canada. So I know I've, I've had Canadians ask me to cover that in the past and I haven't gotten to it yet. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's interesting because that is definitely very common in Canada as well. Yeah, it's it's sad. Um, so let's see. Basically, I'm like, okay, what's going on here? These people don't have to be as remote as they are. They built the Alcan, which is the road that goes from the US all the way to Alaska in nine months. Um, yeah, the US Army was doing it. So they had a lot of men on it. But still, they can make more road systems if they had to, you know, they just don't want to. They, yeah, it feels like they don't want to. Um, and so there's also, I also ran into an article where there is possibly a 
I don't know if I, I think I can say this on YouTube, a satanic cult. Is that fine to say? It's fine. Okay, I'll just limit it. Um, here. And there was this big case. Um, this girl named Miranda Barber, she was 19 years old when she got caught. So she was young. She was caught in actually a different state because she had taken someone off the earth plane. She was arrested and then come to find out she had taken, she lost count after 22 people. She took a lot of people off the earth plane. She said it was under a hundred, but, um, but counted up until 22. And so she actually grew up in North Pole, Alaska. Yes, we have a place called North Pole. That's Christmas all year round and Santa all year round, which I also want to get into. <laughs> Anyway, apparently this CULT is stationed there and she got in when she was 13 years old. And was she um, born she, into it? I don't know. It was like an article. They're not going to really go but into she that. She was 19 when she got caught. She was 19 when she got caught. And she, she had was, already gifted, we'll say gifted Lucifer mm -hmm. with at she, least 22 gifts. Yeah. And it sounded like a lot more. And she, um, uh, I forgot what I was going to say, but anyway, so yeah, she got into the CULT in North Pole and was killing around, and I guess she had gotten pregnant during all this, and they did a ritual and took the baby. Um, another gift. And, yep, another gift, and she does have an actual baby that was born, and but her, the baby daddy is missing, so they think that something happened there, too. He was a gift, too. Yes. This girl likes to give her gifts. Yes. And then another um, incident in North Pole um, in 2006, there was a group of kids that was going to try and pow pow up the school um, on the anniversary of Columbine and also um, Hitler's birthday. So to me, that looks like another um, gift ritual, all that kind of stuff happening in North Pole. So um, yeah, that's about all I have. I just want to uh, show that there might be something more nefarious going on here well, than sure. just um, being remote. Well, they've obviously kept them remote for, well, let's just start with that. Are they keeping these villages remote for a reason? Okay. Actually, I'm sorry. I was on mute there. I couldn't stop coughing and clearing my throat after having that laughing episode. <laughs> well, I'm glad we laughed before this because it is a little darker of a topic. I just can't believe a 19 year old like that is un at 19. Yeah, she said she had an alter ego, and you know what? Well, that's what they do. They yeah. disassociate them. So it make it sounds like she was part of a family. I just looked up North Pole, Alaska, because I love me some Christmas. <laughs> yep i've been there <laughs> oh yeah yeah and now i'm like oh is it creepy look at the mcdonald's with the candy cane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's christmas all year we apparently have a christmas georgia there's oh, yeah? a, a podcast that i love it's called small town murder it's two comedians who find these cases from really small towns and they're hysterical mm -hmm. But mm. I didn't know we had a Christmas Georgia until they did an episode on the Christmas Georgia. <laughs> That's funny. So I got some really wild parts. Do tell. So number one, I'm just going to say this on screen. I always put it in my dis in the uh, description box. Do not take the cards. This is for the audience, not for you guys, because mm -hmm. you are you guys are well aware of this. Do not take the cards as gospel or true facts. Or uh, concrete evidence. This is just what I'm getting as a conduit. There is a shit ton of money in these areas. Or being, Harness. I'm hearing the word laundering. We have it next to the priestess, high priestess card. And this is where it gets a little funky, okay? It's not because it's just money. <clears throat> we have the empress with the three of coins and the faith card, which is the higher fuck card in this particular deck. And I'm getting there's literal like covens in this area, like literal covens. And they are being paid to remove people. 
They're being paid as personal shoppers for Lucifer. It's probably, yeah, a good place to get some of their uh, gifts out of the way for... Queen of Wands on the bottom, yeah. Is there something about Native Indigenous people that's more valuable as... Because, okay, so the reason why... I'm going to be happy to careful how I say this. The reason why they gift Lucifer with people is because Lucifer cannot create life he can't create the spark of life and so he has to feed off of things that carry the spark of life in order to maintain his life force does that make sense Mm -hmm. so we are basically prime rib or what's a good meat i don't know what's a good (laughs) i don't know like the best meat i don't know like the the ones lay mignon lay mignon the ones you pay a lot of money for I didn't look it up, but I do wonder if most of them um, are RH negative. I do wonder if they are part of the original people that escaped Tartaria. And so their DNA is more, pure. for a lack of a better word, pure, you know, not as messed with. So I wonder if that's why they keep them so in this um, cycle to keep them stuck. That's one theory I share with you. Another theory I have too is that I'm just going to be honest. I'm just going to shoot it straight the way it is. I'm a white girl. I'm a blonde haired, blue eyed white girl. I come from a upper class family. What happens if I go missing? Oh yeah. Well, that's kind of what I'm getting in my cards. There, these, I, the way they've set up our our socioeconomic structure, the indigenous people are easy to get rid of without people, without the media giving attention to. Does that make sense? I don't believe that. So I asked, what about the indigenous? Are, why do they go after the indigenous? So I'm using a deck by Sarah Marchetti. That's um, like the Gilded Tarot deck is my favorite. It's just a, you guys already know this, but you know, um, I got this deck called Tarot of Dreams and it has four bonus cards in it called the Palace Cards. And it's talking about actual places. Now I get the Palace of Coins, which is like out in the middle of the woods. Okay. So that's talking about an isolated place in the middle of the woods and it's next to the hermit card. So isolation Mm -hmm. and they can't like, can't travel. So then you have these groupings of people that come in and remove people and they Yeah, and if your law enforcement is corrupt, who are you going to go to? Exactly. The thing is, you call 911, you got to wait for the next day to actually have just a phone call back. Yeah. And yeah. who knows how good their phone system is. So yeah. I know working in the slums of India, I've learned a lot about like mafia because there's mafia in the slums of India. And so I have to be very careful. I have to have a guard with me. And what tends to happen is that the people in these situations, now it's different because they're surrounded by, they're not in the middle of nowhere, but there's an ecosystem that happens. And so, for example, let me just give you guys, and this is why I'm asking this question, okay? Because I don't want you guys to think I'm saying anyone's bad because people sometimes are just in situations. So, for example, in the ecosystem of the slums, um, if a man and a woman are arranged to be married in the slums, they're still untouchables according to the society. So there's no law enforcement. So, like, if the father impregnates the mother and they have children and the father runs off, there's no way for the the country to like bring the father back and make him pay. So what seems to happen is that the women that are left with these children to raise, they don't have an education, they don't have a job, they tend to borrow money from the slum lords to mm. fix their house. When they're a trash house, when they can't pay it back, they get threatened so much that the women will eventually like remove themselves from the earth plane. And that's how the children are collected and brought into um, carpooling situations. We'll say it's a, it's a, it's a cycle. It's a horrible cycle. But what happens in the slums is that people get to know these cycles and they have to integrate into these cycles in order to protect themselves with the slum lords. So the reason why I'm asking about these little, I'm going to ask about these villages are, is there like an, can the cards tell us how they've set this place up? Is there now like this ecosystem within these villages where people just have to go along to get along? Like, are there people that in order for them to survive or to make sure their children can survive, they have to kind of pretend like they didn't see anything. 
Oh, yeah, that's a good question. So I'm not a parent, but I am an aunt. Mm -hmm. And I will do anything to protect my nephew and my nieces. Mm -hmm. And that's not even so I understand a parent's need to protect their own. If that makes sense. So I'm not saying that the people are bad, but I think what happens is with human beings, we're, we're conditioned to survive. And yeah. so there are generations into the situation and they can't get out. You know, maybe they don't have an education to get them out. They don't have an opportunity mm -hmm. to get out and they have a family and you know, the rules of the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And I think this is probably more common than not because we know a lot of law, law enforcement are corrupt. Yeah. I know a few. <laughs> That's another story for another day. And no, I've never been arrested or... Not yet anyway. Well, I haven't had anybody knock on my door about the Guidestones yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I am joking. <sighs> All we did was bless the land. <laughs> Oh, we did. And we look cute on the video doing it. So I hope I did. <laughs> you guys probably think you look cute, but you were so hot. Like sweating. <laughs> you guys were like, <laughs> well, I mean, the temperature did drop about 10 degrees after we spoke in light language, Sanskrit. Oh, and nice. Poured our water, our Florida water. Anyways, Ace to the question. Ace of Wands to the question. And it's like, <clears throat> I feel like they're like promised good, like the women are promised like good things, mm. but then it turns out to be something different. It turns out to actually make a mess out of everything. So, yeah. Do people ever get out of these villages? Like you don't know any story of any person who's actually like gotten out and started yeah. life in Anchorage or gotten. Yeah. Away. So some do get out and there are um, programs like we have like an Alaska native college here and a lot of people from the villages will come there, but like they're in this system. So sometimes they'll go to this college, but they, don't really want to be there. They just want to go back to the village because they're programmed to be home and part of that group. And who knows what's going on? I'm sure they have a job there. Um, anyway, so yes, but it's also like a mindset thing. Sometimes they don't want to change, but there is a lot of money going into this. So I'm like, why, why can't these people make healing centers, like really do something to help these people instead of um, I like Stockholm syndrome a little bit. Well, and, and they've done this yeah. on purpose. Ask, are, ask the, uh, are the cards are, is the, are the controllers using this almost like as a factory farm, a breeding ground mm. for spare human parts? Cause some mm, of them yes. might be used. I'm just going to say this guys, I don't want anybody to be offended by this. This is just what I've researched when I've researched why they pick particular, um, we'll say produce because of censorship. Particular looks, races okay, offer offer different qualities. Mm. Yeah. So the black produce has really good organs. The Haitian has, I guess, more potent pineal. Well, the blonde-haired, blue-eyed male children have really good... Um, mm. They're the best. They have a higher adrenaline. So I think and when, when we're talking about indigenous, I'm wondering if not only are these people gifts, but are they also utilized in other ways too? Well, like, to go like, back to the question I was pulling on. Um, oh my God. Why did I forget what question that was? Are they using them as like a factory farm? Like a, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they are. Um, we have the priestess card with the knight of coins and the emperor. And so it's telling me too, also like has a lot to do with a lot of male energy there, probably like, um, manipulating, um, well, you said there was a lot of RAPE and stuff mm -hmm. there too, but 
yeah, they, they've tricked people to surrender and stay like asleep so that they can use it as breeding ground. Mm. So they're using the, the and, and mind control and black magic is, I mean, we've all been under it with the media with it's, they know how to do this. They know how yeah. to get as an orb just flew by. They know how to get, um, are y'all seeing that? One. Yeah. They're completely mm -hmm. brainwashed. Completely. So it's, it's, it takes a lot to break that programming and that's hard when that's, I mean, I can imagine if you grow up in a small, tiny village like that and that's mm -hmm. what you know, yeah, that's trauma. Well, and it's generation after generation of trauma just being built up. And a lot of these babies are being born with mothers who are under drugs while they're pregnant and alcohol. So it's just a terrible well, system. They can get the drugs and the alcohol there, but they can't get food for under know, $25 right? a pop. Are you kidding yep. me? <laughs> yep, so they can, get those in. can we look into that? Are, are, the, are the powers that be allowing um, a lot of drugs there? If you're okay with me asking that. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny how they can get those stuff there. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you guys. If I were in their situation and I was... Yeah, they are. If I were in their situation and I'm imagining that a lot of these people are pretty poor, I imagine they're probably living off of what they have to survive. I probably would turn to drugs too. If that's yeah, just to survive. Better. Yeah, mm -hmm. if that's the, if that, I probably would too. So I don't blame them. Mm -hmm. Like I don't have any I don't blame them either. judgment. Yeah, so I want to make that clear. If someone's watching that from that area, like I don't blame you. Like that's, you have my yeah. total empathy and understanding when it comes to that. So um, and they, are they pretty poor? I'm assuming they are pretty. I don't know. Um, I do know there's a lot of money because, um, a lot of them are paid monthly because of they are native, but I don't, but I know there's different rules for different tribes and all that kind of stuff. So I can't put that as a blanket statement, but I do know a fair amount of them do get checks every month. And government support. I'm just looking yeah. up. So would these be some of the villages, Natalie? I just typed into villages in Alaska. Yeah. Yeah, some of them bigger than others, some of them small. Interesting. And so they, they totally live in this like ecosystem then. Like like I they totally have do they mm -hmm. have doctors out there or I mean the bigger ones have a clinic. But you have to pay um, people a lot of money to go man the clinic for usually it's about two year stints. Um, you can go there and make good money because no one wants to go there. They have to basically kind of bribe you to go there all winter because they're also a lot of them are pretty north. So it's like dark and cold all winter. So you don't really want to go live there for very long if you don't have to. Um, so, yeah, some of them have clinics, some of them don't. Can you ask the cards? Something's telling me. I don't know who's telling me this. Um, these people are not actually native to this land. Is what someone oh, they removed here. I don't know if that means they were just moved a little north. I, I don't know what that means. What is this? Why is there so many crosses? Is that a, a that's a cemetery, area? and then that one in the background is a um, Russian Orthodox church. We have them everywhere, oh, which I are know. very okay. Tartarian. <laughs> yeah, because I've been doing the Magdalene manuscript, and he talks about going to Alaska and seeing one of these. They are not native at all. Interesting. Can they say you're not going to believe what I got? Are they off worlders? They're Atlantean. They come from a place. We got another palace card. They come up from a place um, in the ocean. Oh. That's the ocean. And the devil, Lucifer, these people, brought them, snuck them to that area. And are harvesting them. Oh, absolutely. Knight of Cups. Love offering to Lucifer. That's disgusting. So I have okay. a question, and this is going to be weird. Um, and I'm trying not to. I know they accuse us of being like bigots, but we know that they themselves, the controllers, are the most R A C I S T people mm -hmm. there are. I know they do target white people. Like, I get that. I know there are white people, but it seems like white people are not as 
targeted? Is that because there are ACIST? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. We figure out, because we know that Atlanteans were all racist. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to figure out why they do this to, I don't even want to call minorities. I don't even think there's such thing as a minority. Because I think if we look at it, we're all pretty evenly matched as far as like genetic coding and stuff. But Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to figure out why they target what they taught us is minorities and not, I mean, I know they still give white people as offerings, but it seems like those offerings are done differently. Yeah, I don't know. Do you guys hear what I'm saying? Like, I'm just trying to figure out, I mean, it's hard for a healthy mind, as my therapist told me, a healthy minded person can never quite understand the, the workings of an unhealthy per- minded person, but mm. I'm just no, trying to make sense. Logic. And why they would move people and how traumatic is that to be told that your your ancestors and your native your your you're from a certain area and this is your land and all of a sudden you're like apps actually this is your jail this is where you were jailed yeah i mean it, it seems like they're just holding them prisoners i wonder about that with uh, native american reserves too yeah probably if it's the same give me a second ladies i'm trying to da- how, get a download on these cards Okay. It's hard. I know, I know what question I want to ask without censorship, but with censorship, we have to be very careful about how we word this. I hope the audience understood what I was saying. I just want to understand. I, I think you said it good enough. I think they honestly, if you have to explain more than what you just said, then those people need to do work for themselves. For themselves. Okay. <laughs> if I understand it, is, <laughs> is, if is people such... have not figured out we are not that by now, no. then they're not paying attention. But and honestly. Just... It is not our responsibility to coddle people's insecurities. I'm short, okay? You can be against short people, and I will still love you, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm like a cute little puppy dog. This is a tale as old as time, though, that they do to to people. They put particular ethnic groups of people in particular situations that resemble this, Mm -hmm. where there's rampant drug abuse, rampant stuff going on. And so it makes me wonder if we're looking and saying, oh, I see clearly now. I see, said the blind man as he put down his cane and walked into a wall. So my great teacher used to tell us every time we said, I see. I'm just trying to figure out. And I, okay, so I know that wasn't, that was must have been Magdalene or somebody else that said they're not from there. That's not their original land. Obviously, that's not their original land is under the sea. Right now, it's probably where that yellow brick road is, um, yeah, which is interesting. That's kind of what I was getting. Alaskans look a lot like Hawaiians. Oh yeah, they kind of do. Yeah, there is differences, sure but yeah. So, um, I think Hawaii actually is part of Atlantis that's still sticking up out of the ocean. That's my personal opinion. I do too. There's just so much about Hawaii, and also Hawaii, just in general. There's a lot of connections with Hawaii and Alaska, so it does make sense um, if possibly part of Atlantis or something. They're calling them the most charming small towns in Alaska. Oh my gosh. I think Lucifer prefers certain types of offerings. Mm-hmm. I think so too. So and they have to keep them alive to keep doing the offerings. So they can't just take the race away. They have to keep them, but keep them captured in prison so that they can have a continuous supply. This question is going to be kind of weird too. I'm trying to figure out. So we know that angels. So a lot of people now believe angels are actually. Hold on. Sorry. Sorry. I had a download. This might not be accurate, but something in my head is telling me I need to say this. I apologize for cutting you off. Apparently, the drink of the white does not last as long in the system. Hmm. Okay. Well, this was going to, what I was going to ask too. So we know that there is a theory and I'm not saying whether I agree with this theory or not. I frankly don't know. I don't have an opinion on it, but there is a theory that angels, what we call angels are actually off worlders. And we believe in that theory to be angels. And we know that. So if if we know that us uh, earthlings as orbs are going around me, Um, hello, how are you? Come join Our the party. Been very, very sassy today. These little spirits around me. I was on with Shanti before, before we started hitting hit record. They were like, 
just a party up in my house. It's because of my, it's because of my golden box. I don't know. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna lighten the mood a little bit. Anyway, okay. as human beings, as earthlings, I it is my belief that we have so many different races, eye color, hair color, all that kind of stuff, because we're a hodgepodge of different uh, star systems. Does that make sense? Like, you know, mm-hmm. like, I look very Palladian, even though I know I'm mostly Lear and I do have Palladian in me too, genetically, obviously, because blonde hair, blue eyes, very Palladian. Mm-hmm. Nordic, uh, Kentuckian is very Nordic looking. Um, what is it? Syrian is a lot of a black skin to come from Syrian, I believe. It's what, I, what, I've, what I've researched. I don't know. You guys can let me know down in the comment section below. So if we're working with the theory that angels are actually off-worlders, then that would mean Lucifer is an off-worlder. Okay? Mm-hmm. A powerful one. Now, we see, obviously, we see Lucifer just, you know, the awful devil-looking stuff. But I'm sorry. If I were Lucifer and I was coming to charm someone, I would make sure I had a particular look about me. If Lucifer is an off-worlder, does he resemble a white person? Mm. And is that why it's not as potent for him? Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that why there's so much emphasis on... Because in my... So what do you think that means? Is that a yes? I got the devil. I asked the question. <laughs> Hold on. Let me get some more clarity. Is Lucifer Palladian? Yeah, no, I'm not white. Is he white? But I went, I mean, I'm not. Palladians are both negative and positive polarity. They're like humans. Yeah. Yeah. Is he a Palladian or is he Orion? Because didn't the Orions come and kind of well, entrap the Dra- us? The Draco work, not all, obviously I don't want to generalize, but the Draco from what I understand, guys, I mean, we're not the experts in off-worlders. Literally, if you had told me I'd be talking about this five years ago, I'd have laughed, laughed your ass off. But um, I know the Dracos serve... I don't... So, because I was... I'm, I'm reading the Law of One, and I just recorded one the other day, and it was basically talking about how the Orion mm-hmm. lost their planet and had to come here, and then that created a bunch of, like, enslavement and... Yeah. They've all lost their planets and have to come here. This is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. yeah, apparently Lucifer is a white person. He don't like it. He don't like me. Is he Palladian? Well, I Let's- can ask him a second. So literally, he's had to surrender to it. And he's been quite upset about it. He's like a whiny little child about it. Oh, so he doesn't want to be white. So he wants, so is that because Palladians are seen? So he's jealous. I think he's yeah. jealous of maybe the um, more mel- melanin induced skin. I mean, it does make sense with um, the people they target. Yeah, like, I know. I know, I know, I know people are going to be going off the comments. Listen, I understand that white people are also gifted. I get that. Trust me. I get that. I know that. But, but it's the way. African community is highly Higher. highly psychic all the tarot mm-hmm. readers that are amazing on youtube they're all african-american all right so i have another question wait sorry were you gonna say something bryce no i, well, I was just thinking that because it's not just the african-american it's also the asian population it's also the indigenous what we call the indigenous which we know we're all indigenous to the earth somewhere but it seems like there's kind of like like if you study serial killers they always they always tend to go within their own race, but with Lucifer, it looks like he's going outside of his race because there's something about not touching. Does that make sense? Like, it seems like we have a thing about genetics and I don't think it's just humans. I think obviously animals know this too. We tend to be kind of, we have, whether we know it or not, we have subconscious understanding of, of people who resemble our own genetics. It's like a connection, right? It's a connecting thing. Like mm-hmm. women are connected because we're all women. So we have, there are things we understand about. Does this make sense? And so I'm trying to figure out the logic. That's all I'm trying to figure out the logic behind why. I have an answer for you on the Palladian. Yes. He wanted what he wanted. They pretty much hung him, said no. He became isolated with the devil. 
are all by angels. the way this is a place suspended in the sky palace of swords that's up in the air that's a place mm -hmm. up in the sky. or a different so realm. it's like so he's like he came down you see what i'm saying came down oh yeah i mean that's paradise there, there's lost. your bible story and that's also paradise lost y'all remember that's john milton's long ass poem paradise lost it follows the fall of Lucifer from Luth Lucifer's perspective. This explains why the oh, Palladians are helping so much. That. Well, let's ask, are all angels Palladians? What we call angels. That's what we call them. Yeah, because they are they would be the ones helping us. So the blue us, eyes, they're the blonde angels. hair. I've never seen pictures of angels look like me. Yeah, they're always blonde hair, blue eyes. Always. Yes. That's why. I yeah, but they always show us the opposite, too, sometimes. I mean, they can, I know angels can shape shift into different entities, depending on what needs to be done. Like if, if they're coming to help you and let's say, you know, you're a kid in India, obviously a white dude's not going to show up. It's going to, he's mm -hmm. going to resemble what you're comfortable with. But when we see them in their form, they look very um, blonde hair, blue eyed. What do we say about chubby? Like my niece, we say she looks like a cherub. She's chubby and she's got white hair and blue eyes. Why, why do we have that image of white chubby babies being cherubs? That's true. Where is that coming from? Is that the Palladian genetics? They were getting it from me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. It's not Palladian. It's not Palladian. I was trying to say the chub chub. Oh, the chub chub? Oh, May has gotten so chubby. I think she's going to be really tall. Um, no, it's not the only place they're from. Are they Lyran as well? They're from also a place that's more foresty. Like, so I was getting like Palace of Swords is like Palladian. I'm almost Avatar. thinking of like Star Wars Return of the Jedi, the moon of Endor with the Ewoks kind of a thing. Oh. I'm getting that picture in my head, which by the way, I channeled somebody the other day to see where they were from and it said Endor. <laughs> is that a real place? So, I mean, I'm sure they're real places. If you are a galactic expert and you know if there's an actual place called Endor, I want to know in the comments section because that makes me excited. I want to go see the Ewoks. <laughs> so I'm going to show you guys. This is my niece. She's at the beach right now. This is what I'm talking about. Can y'all see that? Aww. She's so cute. She's cute. Oh, my goodness. I forgot you had a smaller niece. Yeah, she's a Aww. year old, but she's chubby as hell. I'll go there. Girl's got some chunky thighs, and she's blonde. Nothing and wrong with think, chunky thighs. I mean, look at her. That's a cherub. She's cute. She's so Aww. cute. She's like one of those little babies you just want to squeeze on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Birthday. On a pinch of cheeks. Oh, she's so <laughs> cute. She's a little Gemini, too. She's so nice. She's so cute. But... Why do we say that about blonde? Can you ask, is that why we've been ingrained to call, ingrained to call chunky blonde hair, blue eye babies cherubs? Is it because there is a resemblance? Do we have some memory of that genetically being what a particular off-worlder looks like? Well, before I get into that, I want to finish what I have. <laughs> we always interrupt you, Steph. <laughs> all good i'm used to it by now all you do is interrupt rice back and it's all good after <laughs> they also come from earth the angels do well they're just people from different dimensions right are they from agartha agartha they're probably from all over because that could be inner earth they come up i do think they're from several places but earth is one and we just call them angels. This is because they're higher dimensional. Like, why do we call them angels? Because they're higher dimensional. Mm -hmm. This is confusing. Oh. Here's the well, thing. Okay, so back There's to the lots law. of us that are angels incarnate. Mm -hmm. Back to the law of one, I was reading where it's like, you know, you're so high of a dimension and then you want to serve and then you're there to then help people who call out to you. And is that not an angel? Yeah. You know, that's I mean? the law of one. Because the law of one. Okay, so let's ask: Are angels six density? Because the law of one goes by densities. Yeah, yeah, and basically, whatever density you're at, yes. you can see all densities, but um, you can't really see past your density. If that makes sense. Yeah, and the law of one won't go past six density. They won't talk about past six density because it's beyond our comprehension. So mm -hmm. my thing my, that saying that through the law of one, then six dense six six density beings 
would then be angels because you can see below your density. So they can see things we, so let's ask our, what we consider demons, even though demons we know are angels. Are they sixth sense? I don't even think, actually, I think about the law of one. I don't think since uh, sixth density goes negative. I think it only goes to like fourth density negative because then the planet implodes and they have to go back into the positive. Maybe. I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> I, I keep feeling like there's something, I don't know how to word this, but I feel like 666 was hijacked. It oh, has something sure to do with sixth density, something. So I know it actually has a spiritual meaning behind it. I know what that meaning is, but does it have anything to do with the six density beings? Well, if we're six, if so, according to the law of one, the three of us and probably most of you are watching right now are what they call wonderers. So according, this is how, this is how the law of one defines this. So we volunteered just like game of our um, hunger games. I volunteers tribute. We were something really the, wrong with my soul then. We were the dumbasses that were like, I'll go back. Let's do we're this shit. Then we're like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do periods again. Whatever. Um, anyway, we volunteered to come back down to their density to Earth at this time to help Earth transition. Now, the problem with this little contract, and we knew this going into it, is that coming down to their density, we lose all of our memories. They don't mm -hmm. remember shit. They don't remember anything. <laughs> and it's a huge sacrifice because I was reading that you can then be karmically, you get more karma on you. So it's like you're, you get, you're you like get sacrificing stuck. to help these people, yet you can still get karma you on you while stuck. you're here because yeah. your memory has gone. Yeah, you can get karmically stuck and have to do third density over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah. If you got karmically stuck. Okay, we need to wipe all my karma. And the samsara of, of third density. That's why, it's, that's why it's so important to do your fucking work. Because you, I, you I do not want to do this again. No. no. I'm, not, I'm like, what did oh, I do? Sorry. Now, once you get to fourth density positive, though, you do have what's called, in the, according to the law of one, a collective memory bank. So from what I understand, what that means is that you don't necessarily have to experience everything. So... If I am a fourth density, if we're on a fourth density planet, and let's just use this as an example. Let's say that I want to, this is going to be a horrific example, but this one I can think of. I want to experience what there is to learn from being rape -E mm. I don't have to go do it myself. I can tap into the collective memory bank and share in the collective consciousness to, to, to get, gain, that, gain that wisdom. And that so once you hit fourth density, then you can evolve faster, I would think. Yeah, but it's it's not, it, it still takes a few lifetimes in these different, there's more challenges. So every density has more challenges. So it's not, you just don't, yeah. third, third density is like, third density is like the most intense because it's the last density of polarization. Okay. Where there's both negative and positive polarized on the planet. And we're not the only third density planet, guys. Yeah. But apparently we're the gangster one we're the hellions this planet we're the planet that the, that the aliens drive by and they lock their doors <laughs> so, don't stop there keep going there's other third density or the planets. north end of hartford <laughs> that's a really bad area by the way really bad area just saying we are we're the compton or the south central of uh of of the galaxy and that's why a lot of people want to come to earth is because yeah. they have so many lessons that they get to learn here yeah, you go to the extreme of, of polarities. Like our polarities are extreme here. Other third density planets, they're not doing the same ritualistic stuff our bad guys are doing. So it's not, it's, but, but you, you don't move up as fast because it's, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day too, we're all eternal souls. So it doesn't really even matter how long it takes you because yeah. we're all going to be on this Ferris wheel forever. So it's not a race. No, um, no one's better than another if you're in third versus fourth, you know, so. And this is why um, a lot of wanderers get spiritually attacked a lot too, is because according to law of one is because um, even though you are living a third density life and dealing with third density of emotions, your vib vibration is still higher. Mm. So what happens is these dark entities see you. Now, if they can get you to turn from positive to negative, that generates more power for them. Which they do by like messing with your brain so you don't know what's real and or what's good, what's bad. They mess with you. Yeah. 
and they get tired. So there, there was one, um, I don't know if it's in the law of one or in one of the readings where the woman who was channeling it, they talked about how you have got, you have your, your guides and your guards and your spirit guides, but they get tired sometimes because they're on guard with you like 24 seven. And when you're a higher being and you're constantly being attacked by dark entities, they're I'm sorry, grandma and grandpa. Their <laughs> guides are like so tired. They're like, they're this fucking time. exhausted. Like, they're like, when's this shit going to be over? Like this and this chick doesn't even How do you know. think I feel? Well, when's they're like, and this, most humans don't even, aren't even aware of it. Right. Yeah. So um, that's why it's important. That's why, uh, according to law one, that's why surgeries are scary is because when you go under anesthesia, your soul can be switched out. Oh. That and is the Cassiopeians talk about this too, that if you had a, a loved one go under the knife and they came out and they were different their soul got switched i'm still the same old soul me too i've been under the knife many times i've been under the knife three or four times nothing listen. horrific but yep listen i've just gotten my tonsils out or not tonsils uh teeth wisdom <laughs> teeth out it's all i've gotten <laughs> With someone like yeah, Magdalene attached to you, I think that they got a pretty, they got a pretty strong fight, but yeah, no, it's, it's, um, it's interesting when you get the law of one to me is the best at explaining what's going on right now. Cause it ex explains it very pragmatically. It's very scientific. And it's like, this is what happens. This is what this is. There are different densities. And then we're also in a time period right now. And we know this, we know that those of us who are waking up, we're seeing things that others aren't. For example, we're seeing people shape shift and the truth or community on, on screen. We're seeing their eyes change. We're seeing their teeth change, but some people aren't seeing that. It's because we're, we're, we're leveling up our, our, the veil is thinning for us. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, according to the law of one, as we make this transfer between third, third density and fourth density, we're going to be going in and out of third and fourth for a while. That's why it's so There's people right. that won't even recognize. I've had so many people not recognize me out public. Yeah. Because literally you're in, you're glitching at, in and out of two different dimensions. Mm -hmm. And then also two psychic abilities are coming online to you a lot stronger. I had a wild vision today that literally was like almost actually happening outside my door, but it wasn't. I thought I was hallucinating oh, wow. for a second. Yeah. I'll have to tell you guys off camera, but yeah. Um, wild. Yeah. And so uh, for, so this earth, planet earth is going to ascend like 100% is going to ascend but it's either going to go positive or negative. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be third density anymore. So that's why the people that are not ready to be in fourth density. So we're either, if you're going to ascend, you're either going to ascend positive or negative. All right. Mm -hmm. For those who are not going to ascend, that's why they have to exit because there's going to be no more earth. That now, makes sense. Cause they have to go to another third density planet, right? Now, according to the law of ones, all the souls on this planet right now are old enough to potentially be harvested. That's what they call it as harvesting. Oh, okay. But a lot of them are not ready. So har I see it, you know, like in university, when you, when you go to graduate, you have to petition to graduate. Like you have to go and prove that you have enough credits or whatever to, to graduate. It's kind of how mm -hmm. we see it. Like they, they petition. And yes. And if you are a higher density being that got caught in the Sam Scar cycle. So if you came, if you're a sixth density soul and you came down and you bought into you, know, you got your PhD at Harvard and you're not letting that shit go. You're going to have to stay in their density for a while. Even though you're I mean, this is why there's a major influx of um, ambulances and stuff like that. Like, um, I mean, I, I've said this, I think I've said this on your show, Bryce, like, right. you know, I, um, I live in an area that's not really that congested on a normal basis. Maybe an ambulance every week, if that, and now it's about six or seven, possibly eight sometimes in a day. Wow. Yep. It's very unusual. And, and people that are not awakened have even commented there's something weird going on. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's why, like, when Mr. T promoted, if you read the law of one, you understand why he did that. All right? Because nothing's black and white. Remember, black and white thinking is brain, it's, it's a mental disorder, derangement. Mm -hmm. When you're looking at polarizing positive, you have to be sovereign. You have to. That's the positive polarity. So you have to stay on your own two feet. You have to do your work. Doesn't mean you don't have bad days. Doesn't mean you don't have days where you're- Yeah, you're still so human. So human, yeah. but you have to be sovereign. And so, 
by Mr. T doing that, he gave people an opportunity to pick to be sovereign. Mm. And if they went and because Mr. T told them to, that's not sovereign. Yeah. So that's weeding people out. It wasn't forcing anybody to do it no. either. But if you are doing something because someone you respect is encouraging you to, not because you decided to do it on your own, that's not sovereign. So that was why he did that. And when you, when you understand the law of one, you understand exactly why he did that. He was getting you to stand on your own two feet. And so if any, oh, so if any of you guys are interested in the law of one, I'm going over on my channel. So come follow along and start on episode one, because it's actually really interesting and I'm learning a lot. Um, but it is, I think, kind of important to start from the beginning and go through it. Yeah, it is. to go back and watch your videos on that. I've been meaning to. And the interesting thing, I don't know if you've got, have you gotten to the part where they talk about Yahshua? Not yet. No. I know I've told you this, Stephanie, the law of one, Yahshua was only a fourth density being. Oh, I didn't he know wasn't. That. So a lot of us are a higher density. Interesting. Yeah, they say he was only fourth density. Yeah. And he was so eager to come back down to third density to teach people because he had just mm -hmm. graduated to fourth density. That's why he could do all his stuff is because he was so new in fourth density. Oh, he's so cute. He's like a little kid. That's why Ew. Magdalene wore the pants in that relationship. <laughs> <laughs> the raven. <laughs> She's like, why are you reeling me back into this again? <laughs> she just told me she was, she just told me she was fifth density and he was fourth when they came to earth. But can, if you're twin flames, can you do, do that? Yep. I think so. Cause you're sovereign. Once you're, once your soul splits. You I guess, yeah. You decide separate. how yeah. much work you want to do. That's why I keep telling you. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Once you split your same soul, once you've split, you're still at autonomous. Pete, you're Maybe. your free will. Maybe that's why um, sometimes it's hard for Twin Flames to come back together because maybe sometimes they're in different dimensions too. One has one has leveled up before the other. Yeah. And yeah. that's why in the Magdalene manuscript, she activated him because she was already more leveled up than he was. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. It still doesn't okay. mean. So like if, if I'm a sixth density being and my twin is a fifth density being, it doesn't mean that we're still don't say share the same soul. Because remember the mm -hmm. idea of souls is that if you go through the Sophia code, we are living all of our past lives simultaneously. Yeah. So we're living as mold on a rock because first density is plant life. Yeah. We started as plant life. You were, you were once mold on a rock. I hope I was never a bug. Yeah, you probably were. You probably were. You yeah. Well, and you have We've all been levels. So like second density is animal life. So animals, so like Robbie, my dog, because he is loved and cherished by third density beings next life he becomes third density that's how that abby you get to level up girl that's how that's how it works so the the rat out on the street is going to have a few more rounds in second density until it's able to be in the have compassion and, and I learn hope i never got squished by someone's foot you probably did it's it's okay. the probably toilet. Did, yeah well, and guess what the law of one talks about this too so your karma starts accumulating from the minute you're born not when you come into the age of accountability, which is eight. So the minute you're born, mm. you're accumulating karma. All right. So even the bugs you step on without knowing is accumulating karma. Oh, son but, of a bitch. But they have the law of forgiveness. Okay, so, bugs, forgive me. I'm so sorry. So if I you didn't, didn't know what I was know, doing, if you didn't know what you were doing, you had no way of being aware you were stepping on a bug, it's forgiven. Um, if you eat meat because you're in a culture that eats meat, it's forgiven. But if I have arachnophobia and I really can't go near a spider and actually collect it and put it outside and I suck it up with the vacuum and then I say sorry to it. That's still, that's still, we're going to have to work on that. You got to work through that arachnophobia. Work on that, girl, that's, 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 I have really that. bad arachnophobia. According, I have that. I ha I'm fearful of mice. And the last time I had to deal with the mice, I had someone come catch it and release it into the wild because mm -hmm. I knew I couldn't kill it. I'm just glad we have like tiny spiders here. I, spiders don't scare me at all. I usually just big leave ones. Them. I leave them. We, <laughs> I get, do. we, yes. we have wolf spiders that are like that big. Ew. So we're going to have to work on that. So that's, that's your trigger. That's your karma. <gasps> you it's also oh, like we're programming. Gonna... Like you're programmed to <clears throat> kill spiders and bugs. If I see a spider in one day, that day, I won't be able to sleep. Can't sleep. I put them out. So I, I usually ignore them unless they're in the bathtub. Then I scoop them up and I put them outside. That's what I do. <clears throat> It'd be sick. 
I saw a feel about mice. I can't handle rodents, but last time I had to deal with one, I had someone come in and catch it and release it. Cause I'm not going to kill it because that goes, that's karma for me. And that's not fair just because well, I wouldn't want to kill a mice because they have cute faces. Just because I'm scared of the ma- mice or have a trigger from doesn't mean that that mice has to pay that price because that's me projecting my karma onto that rodent. And that's not fair to the rodent's life. And so that's why I have someone move it. Yeah. Well, the audience is getting a lovely lesson today and knowing that I have built up a lot of karma from killing spiders. Well, and <laughs> yeah, and so we were talking about Alaska. We got a little off, but that, but it's interesting because we're looking at spiritual warfare too. And yeah. so when we, when we, and that's all this really is about, right? That's all, that's why we're trying to figure out who the hell Lucifer is, what the hell is going on. We're trying to make sense of something that doesn't make sense. We're mm-hmm. trying to figure out why the hell we volunteered to come back into this. I have no idea. My soul's um, nuts. Yeah. It's, you know, and none of us want to get stuck. Well, the good news is law of one day says the law of one does say that it is rare for a high density being to get turned negative. There's only a couple of, I'm not times. negative. I know I'm not negative. Well, but. that's the good news that there are the times in history it's happened. The law of one won't say they won't, they won't tell you mm. they are very about it. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, but why don't we close up? So we kind of have some idea that there's something very, very nefarious going on in Alaska, not because of the people We'll make them very clear. All three of us on this channel, I think I can speak for both of you, believe that all human beings are equal and are full of abundance and a full of pure love and all human beings deserve equal respect. And I'll tell you, me as a person, I don't care what color your skin is. I don't care what your sexuality is. I don't care what your gender is. If you're an asshole, you're an asshole. Yeah, that's how I live. And if you're a good person, you're a good person. Mm -hmm. I don't give a shit what you look like but we know that they live like that that they understand and but there is there is different qualities to different genetics like there is that is true there is things that are different genetically about white people versus black people it's not better or worse it's just different obviously because we i believe our genetics well let's just ask that one got a couple more questions will the card specify do we have different skin color eye color hair color genetic uh, properties because of our off world or ancestors, because we're a hodgepodge, which according to some people, because we are a genetic hodgepodge of all these different star systems, that's why humans are so powerful. We just don't know. Oh, it. okay. Cause even okay. though I might look Palladian, I could have a little bit of Syrian in me. I could have a yeah. little bit of, you know, we just don't know. <laughs> I could have a little French man in me. <laughs> Hopefully he's not little. Let's be clear. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you need to take that out of the video. Just need to take that out. Just take it out. <laughs> it's just a joke. This is from a previous episode, guys, where I said I had a little friend to me from my ancestors and uh, Taylor and Stephanie lost it. I didn't even realize I'd said it that way. I was just talking about genetics. And then he said Syrian, and I'm sorry. My mind went there again because I can't help it, you know? Anyways... So I have another bonus card in this deck. Oh, you got it again? Sweet. No, I got a, a different one. There's, not, there's more than just four palace cards. There's oh. a tree of life card. And that was the first one to pop out. So that looks like, yes. We, yeah, that looks like a... I found this interesting that out of all the cards, this one pops out first. That question that we are a hodgepodge of different... Yeah. And like awkward. truth behind it. <laughs> Damn. She's truth both. I have the ace of swords. So, sorry. It's been a long day, too. That's truth as well. And yeah, it's like five of swords is like. How would I word it? Let's just go with yes. Yeah, because it's maybe. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm having a hard well, time. Of course, I see it like we don't, we want to believe the story of evolution. We want to believe that that's why I, I look a certain way. It's because my family, my ancestors were from like the fucking Netherlands of Sweden or something, you know, like, but that's not the truth. That's not why. Mm-hmm. And we know this that fell out. The tower. Yeah. People are going to freak out when they realize that. Cause we know when, and we look at Egyptian hieroglyphs, there's like all sorts of different, they are fucking blue people on the walls of Egypt. Mm-hmm. Where are the blue? I'm sorry. Am I the only one that's concerned about these blue people? Like, where did they want blue skin? I think blue skin is cool. I mean, we 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 saw them in DC too. I was like, seventy. The yeah, blue, they were in the walls of DC. Where are they? I see white people. I see black people. I see Latin people. I see Asian people. Where the fuck are the blue people? 
They're on the walls. Where'd they go? Anyway, so you got a spray no tan no every day. No up the poison of other people anymore. Yeah, well, that's what the Hindu deities are. The blue people. That's why they suck up the poison. So, okay, so let's ask them. Let's just let's just tie this off. Maybe we can do. I'll ask this, and I'll ask with Natalie and Stephanie if there is someone from Canada that knows a lot about the missing Indigenous people of Canada. Would you contact me or leave a comment down below for me to contact you? And you can come on with Natalie and Stephanie, me, and we can combine you and Natalie's information. But let's ask before that, is there a connection between the missing indigenous people of Canada and the indigenous people of Alaska in these villages that are obviously being farmed by the nefarious ones? I think there probably is, but. Yeah. You know what they say about assuming it makes an ass out of you and me, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's that look for, Steph? Suspense. Ah, oh, this is so weird. There is. So that's a connection. I got is that the two of cups? I pulled the two two of cups too when I was asking the question. And I have that Atlantean card again. Oh, well, so this would be a cool so, one to dive into. Yeah. So the indigenous people of Canada and the indigenous people of Alaska obviously genetically are the same. We know that the powers that be are the ones who brought down Atlantis. So, of course, they're naturally going to go after the in Atlantean indigenous. I'm not saying not some of us are Atlantean either, because I know I had a past life in Atlantean. I'm Atlantean as well. But, but it's, um, it's different. Like, your soul is different versus, like, your human genetic body, yeah. you know? And, and I feel like that literally they are survivors. Their lineage survived Atlantis. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were the ones that survived yeah. Well, it's interesting. Right. O, ne o negative blood. Can we ask? Is it do a lot of them carry O negative blood? Yeah, I wonder that. I bet they do. I, I'm O negative. We know most O negatives are typically blonde hair, blue eyed, red eyed, green eyed, all that kind of stuff. But I know the Native Americans and the Indigenous people also carry a high, high. Maybe high they percentage. don't have O negative, but maybe they just have negative in general. Recessive negative. Well, we know that's the Atlantean blood because that's the Magdalene blood. Magdalene and Magdalene was blonde hair, blue eyed. Or is blonde hair, blue eyed, and she carried over the Atlantean blood with Yashua, mm. uh, with the uh, Merovingians. I have a question after this one. Okay. Well, I just got the Ace of Pentacles. They originally did, but it could have been manipulated. I have the Magician card. And the chariot card. So something was switched out really quickly. Just like for all of us, I guess. Well, let's, can we, before your question, can we ask one last question about the blood? Was the rhesus positive added into the blood stream of 85% of the humans during, after the mud Incubator flies? babies? Yep. Did they add in? So that would that being said, what I'm saying, guys. cups. Oh, wow. Which I already figured out. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, because I feel like before, um, I think we all ascend or descend from rhesus negative. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I don't think anybody's going to be rhesus positive once everything is healed and we're in our light bodies. Yeah, because yeah. the rhesus positive was instead of coming from monkeys, they inverted it. They actually added the rhesus factor from the monkey, the rhesus monkey, into yeah, blood. The blood and changed out the dna they were trying they were also trying to, to modify our species too um i mean supposedly this is going to grow some people out but supposedly pigs are half wild boar and half human yeah, yeah i've heard that too and i wonder about monkeys too are monkeys half human and half something else as well i don't know we'll see we'll see okay so what was your question natalie so if these people are Atlantean or whatever, they obviously have a higher vibration or a potential for stepping into a lot of power. Are they suppressing the women there so that they don't step into their power? Because if they did, they probably had have the power to like get rid of them. Does that make sense? The women are the chalice. Mm -hmm. but yet they're there's so many RAPE there. Like they're really suppressing the women. And suppressing them, is that suppressing the divine feminine as a whole? Like the whole world's divine feminine by suppressing them? 
They're suppressing them, yes, because they are powerful. And it's been for generations, and it's caused a lot of disappointment, grief, and probably suicidal ideation. Sorry, I didn't mean to put that. Okay, it's only one time, so I don't think YouTube will. Can we, can I ask, is white buffalo woman connected? Oh. This? Oh, yeah. Because that's all, like, Canada and Alaska has the buffalo. And, uh, oh, I guess was buffalo also, goes lower. So she was part of this. That was something to do with the Sioux tribe. Um, but let's, that's she, still indigenous. That's she, indigenous. That's why I'm asking. And she, so in the white Buffalo woman key code, I don't know if it says in the key code or if it says it in my research, it did, cause it'll be airing, um, this week, actually. Um, it says that at the end of this time, she will return. Yeah, she is returning. She and she has returned. She has. I know who she, I know who she is. I know who she is. She has, she's been, little did I know until recently, she's been a human guide of mine in this life. Stephanie knows her too. That's awesome. So, so did it say she's returned? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know who she is. And is she connected to the feminine power through the indigenous? Yeah, these cups. Yep. And the justice card. So she's feeling you know, weirder and weirder, guys, and I'm totally here for it. I know it just gets more and more interesting to me. So is there anything the cards want to tell us, I guess, that we haven't asked? <clears throat> Spirit, this doesn't help. <laughs> I hate when I get a set of cards and I'm sitting here like, what? What? I'll shuffle. So, what, Spirit, any final, I'm just going to ask final thoughts on our topics today regarding the indigenous or what we consider to be the indigenous people of Alaska and Canada and these villages that are all I asked. Sorry. All I asked was just a general, what does spirit want to tell us? What does God a creator want to tell us? So <clears throat> to have strength, don't let disappointments block you because in the near future, divine feminine will return. because uh, I have the Wheel of Fortune right here. Um, it, it, there will be temporary setbacks, but don't let yourself get imprisoned in your own mind. So just hold on a little longer is kind of what I'm getting from that. That's awesome. I'm going to have to ask Spirit again, because Spirit just basically told me the story of what we just read. <laughs> so let me be more clear. Well, at least we were on to something. It was confirming we were right, maybe. <laughs> we figured that out. We don't figure that out, Spirit. Let's... Uh, <laughs> What do we, if there's a, if there's an indigenous person watching right now, I'm going to ask Magdalene specifically, my girl Magdalene, Magdalene, since you're a divine feminine, is there, if there's an indigenous woman in Alaska or Canada or anywhere else in the world that feels like things are unfair and they, their people have been treated horribly by the controllers, is there a message that you have Magdalene for, I'll just say for any woman in the world, any women who are feeling what do you have to say to them, Magdalene? I think it, I'm just going to leave it at that. I think I just need these three cards. Thank you, Magdalene. Change is coming. Yes, it was rough. Five of Pentacles, which is painful but temporary. And if we look at the big scope of our time with Dartaria, it has actually been temporary. But emotionally balanced male is coming. King Cups. It's all going to be good. I got the Sun card too. Because yeah, I asked the same question. I have a shit ton of wands. Wands are fire. I think what I'm getting from this is they're about to be like. Be a big fire of revelation, revolution. 
Um, they're very intuitive people, <laughs> very intuitive. And they've been through a lot, but they're going to be vindicated and liberated. And it's going to come really, really fast. And things are going to be uh, more abundant for them. And um, this is actually a really happy card. So if an indigenous person is out there, um, this is abundance. This is um, being one with nature. And then we have the celebration card. So things That's are going to awesome. turn. Things are mm -hmm. going to turn. It's not going to stay this way. Yeah. So if that can give someone hope out there. That's good news. I mean, I can't imagine everything they're going through. So hey, I listen, can't wait for them to be free. You know, Alaska might have palm trees one day. You know what? When you have a palm tree, everything is so much better. So if we're going back to a period of time when we're not going back, but we're going forward and we're going to go back to our original climate. Yeah. It's all going to be good. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. And I guess the lesson, I think we don't, we don't need to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway, just be kind to everyone. Every yeah. human being on this earth deserves your respect and your compassion. We're all on this planet together. And I know sometimes people that live in these dilapidated places we kind of walk by and not even notice but just a little bit of kindness goes a very long way mm -hmm. just smiling at people goes a very long way we all whether you know somebody or not we all agree to do this together we just don't yeah. remember <laughs> we just don't remember so we all agreed and we all agreed to play the roles we're playing now we all agreed on what life we were going to pick coming into incarnation for a particular reason and so for the people mm -hmm. that are having it the hardest maybe they deserve more of our respect yeah, it's true. Because they volunteer to do that. Yeah. We think our life is hard. Like, it's nothing compared to what some people are going through. Yeah. So. I saw food on my table. Yeah. Yeah. Same. I saw a roof over my head. I have gratitude for that. Yeah. So those people that agreed to do this battle with us and took up these parts that were going to be more difficult, they deserve our utmost respect. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I agree. So if you're an indigenous person who's awake and watching this right now, thank you. Yeah, for <laughs> real. And you also probably um, are vibrating so much more than some people. So like you're doing a bigger difference than you think by getting out of that um, mindset. Yeah. And yep. it'll all be good. All right, guys. Well, once again, I'm going to put everybody's channel links in the script in the description box below. Please make sure you go and subscribe to Natalie and to Stephanie if you haven't already. Once again, I'm going to put a call out if you are from Canada. You don't have to be from Canada. If you've just studied a lot about the indigenous, the missing people mm -hmm. on that one highway in Canada and you want to present your research, let me know in the comment section. Let me know how I can get in touch with you. And um, Stephanie and Natalie, I'll bring you on and we'll have you come present your research and We'll compare it to Natalie's and then we'll ask Stephanie some questions. Yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. And I'll just sit my smoothie and watch. No. <laughs> <laughs> you get so, the easy position there, right? I uh, hell listen, I do so much research. There's so many topics that I still have on my list to research and I just don't have I haven't had the time because it's, it's time consuming. It's time consuming. And um, so I if anybody wants to step in, I know next Friday I'm gonna be drawing names. I have people that have entered in to come in to present their towns. Like oh, we cool. the Rural Hill. So I've got a list of names. So next Friday I'll be drawing those names. Um, also too, um, if anybody wants to, I don't know whose email we want to do, but I was going to make a slideshow of um, Tartarian buildings in different places of the world. Oh, that'd be cool. knows that on Aquarius Rising Africa. So if you have a Tartarian, a Tartar building in your backyard, in your town, Send them on in, and I will make a slideshow. What's the email you want people to use? I just, I don't, I don't have anybody joining groups right now, just because of the infiltration, co concentrated people lately. So we can just use my group email. Okay. And do not email me on that email for anything else. Just your pictures and where you're from, and that's it. Where? Um. What's that email again? That's the Q17 Amazing Grace group at yahoo.com. 
Okay, and I'll put that down in the description below yeah. box below. Guys. Yeah, because I'll make a slideshow because I want to present that and be like, yep, people, it's everywhere. Yeah, I'm excited for that one. I just love looking at those buildings. Well, our ancestors were living, they were living the good life. We talked about that with Shanti today. People were like, oh my God, we're going back mud huts. I'm like, honey, they weren't mud huts. Have you seen those? Yeah. They no, were they were like, much more intricate. They have more than pores. They, like, you can't even duplicate any of those right now with the no, tools we have. They were not. There was no such thing as mud huts in Tartaria. It was a thousand years piece. Okay. Listen, mm -hmm. listen. They, they we lived in marble places. They peed on golden toilets. Like, come on. And then they used that with their golden right boxes. <laughs> with their golden <laughs> boxes. <laughs> You got to add some humor to these dark, these dark times. All right, guys, we love you very much. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye.